Hey everybody, it's Simon from Lake Up. It's summertime, but I'm in a hunting mood because it's time to plan for all of our public hunting opportunities on the lake, off the lake, and beyond. In Texas, the best public hunting opportunities are through Texas drawn hunts. Now, what Texas drawn hunts are, are basically a bunch of different lotteries going on all at the same time. Um, it might be free to enter, it might be $3 upwards of $10 for uh, the, the big time hunts is what they call them, big time, you know, kind of big game, high fence type hunts. There's a lot of different opportunities for public hunting. So how do you apply for a Texas drone hunt? You do it through the website. So I'm gonna go back and forth between my screen camera and show you exactly how to use the Texas drone hunt system. You go to the website, I'll put the link down below in the description, and you hit this big green button, apply for hunts. I'm gonna to go to browse the hunt catalog. And here, right here by area, this is the best place to start. This map is a new feature for the Texas Drawn Hunt system. This makes things so much easier. It took, it took, uh, hours of planning before to be able to achieve what I can now achieve by just looking at this map. This map is totally awesome. I can't, I cannot describe how awesome this map is and how useful it is. So what I like to do is go by category because I'm going to start with what species I'm going to pursue, right? So let's just say, um, I'm going to go with archery deer just for example. Okay. So here all, we see it filters all of the locations that there are uh, drawings to hunt archer deer on. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I kind of like East Texas. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, double click or zoom in. And what do we have here? Fort Boggy State Park. State parks are pretty cool. Wildlife management areas. So I'm gonna open each of these into a new tab and we'll compare them. I'll pick one. Okay, so we have Gus Engling, and then we have Fort Boggy. Okay, first thing I'm going to look at is the application deadline. I haven't missed it, have I? And in this case, no, I have not. Use of ATVs is allowed. If that's uh, your style, then that's something to be concerned about. Um, on this one, ATVs are prohibited, right? Uh, the other thing I look at is when is the hunt? Can I make it? Um, this is opening weekend of of rifle season. And so, eh, I don't know if I want to miss that. Now, this one's in late October. I think I might, so, so far I'm leaning towards gut singling. You know, you can apply for both, but um, I'm just leaning towards one or the other. This one's got a fee, Fort Boggy State Park. I, I've noticed that all the state parks have fees, but if you've ever been to a state park and you see how docile the wildlife is and how abundant they are, and just n unpressured, it would be so awesome, so awesome to hunt in a state park. Uh, so uh, I would gladly pay that $130 if I was uh, selected to hunt the state park. That would just be so cool. Okay, uh, the other thing I like to look at is down here in the bottom. Last year, we've got some data on last year. Now, if this, if this, uh, if there was not an archery hunt available on this property last year, there won't be any data here. Um, for instance, we've got 529 applications. How many, how many groups, the su success rate, we've got some missing data here for Fort Boggy. So, um, that doesn't give me a lot to go on. Now, um, these numbers, the success rate, 11%, that's not amazing, um, compared to other properties that, that I've seen on here, but you know, it's something, it's, it's better than no data, right? So we've got 500 applications here, we've got 698 here, we have 60 available, so you have about a one in 10 chance um, unweighted, and same here, you've got about a one in 10, right? Um, no, that's not right, you've got about a 1% chance. Okay, I'm out, I'm out on a 1% chance. I'm gonna apply this to this one right here. So, We've got 60 permits, that's a lot of people. It's compartment hunting, which means that you're gonna have a designated area to hunt. So that's a little bit safer. Um, 
you know, you still have a fee here. You're going to have a fee. Uh, it, but, you know, a 1 in 10 chance of success might be worth it to you, right? And then you've got all of these specifications. So you can take one deer. Um, you've got the inside spread rule on the bucks, right? So a buck, a spike, or a doe. One deer. And you've got four days, five days to do it. So I like this. I'm going to apply to this and that's how you pick. Now you've got, sometimes you have um, different dates. You'll have, you know, three or four different weeks that they're going to be running this thing. And so you kind of have a, a first, second, third choice of dates. And I'm not sure how that shakes out. That just depends on who gets drawn and, and so forth. If you, if you're taking, you know, say a friend or a child with you, you'd add your applicant here. Um, if you want to show the details again, just to be clear, you can do that. I'm going to add this to cart. Minimum number of application applicants is one. Oh, I have to add myself. So this is where you add your personal information, which I'm not going to do on camera because I value privacy, but you get the idea. It's a typical checkout process. So once I add myself, add it to cart, you, know, you can check out a bunch of hunts at the same time, which is usually what I do. Um, you can you can also go to let me see if I can find it here. Go to the main menu. I can check my status. If you go to check your status, same thing. You put in your personal information. Um, I usually just use my driver's license number because I have that memorized, and I don't like putting my social online. So that's what I use um, to check it. Last name, date of birth, driver's license. That's all you need. You do a search. You click on your name, and then it has every application you've ever done. It also keeps track of how many times you've applied to one category. So for instance, archery deer, this is going to be my first time applying for archery deer, but I know that I've done uh, pretty much all of the gun deer categories several times over. And what it does is it'll give you more chances every year you apply for these things. It'll give you more chances the next year. So you're kind of racking up points. And it's a weighted lottery. So it uh, it's going to give better chances to the people who have been applying faithfully year after year rather than just a random lottery every, every single year. So you do want to pay attention to the ones that you've applied to in the past. So the first place that I go, um, uh, just to back up a little bit, is I do go to check my status, figure out which ones I've applied for in the past, and then I go through find the properties I want to pick within those categories, check out all at once, and I'm done. I do that in the beginning of August, and I'm good for the rest of the year. Now, I want to tell you, I've won one of these drawn hunts, and I've lost one of these drawn hunts. Because what I found out the hard way is how they notify the winners is by email. Now, the email does not come from tpwd.geotexas.gov. It comes from txfgsales.com. And the person that I talked to at Texas Parks and Wildlife said to me, yeah, usually those go to junk mail and people miss them. Usually. That was the word that was used. <sighs> I still have to take a deep breath when I think about that because sure enough, it went to junk mail and after 10 days of no response, they redraw and you lose your points. <laughs> so uh, I totally won and totally lost a drawn hunt. Uh, I still, I, I still, my blood pressure kind of gets a little spike there, but we gotta, we gotta take it easy. This is hunting. This is fun. We're having fun here. So learn from my pain, learn from my mistake, learn from my pain. What I found out was that the drawings happen two to three days ish is what I was told after the application deadline. So a few business days after the, the application deadline is when the hunt happened or when the drawing happens and then everybody's notified. Then they have 10 days to respond. So Mark, your calendars. I would say 10 days after the drawing 
make a mark on your calendar just to be sure that you hit in that sweet spot of it's art you've already been notified but it hasn't lapsed yet 10 days after each that they're going to be different times i mean depending on the species archery is going to be is going to close earlier you know alligator proghorn are going to close earlier um, turkey is going to close later you know spring turkey is going to close later so all these deadlines are going to be for the drawings are they're staggered and they're going to be at different times so just make sure you mark your calendar for 10 days after it closes and don't even bother checking your email you just go here and check your status you can see your status on every single drawing it hasn't been drawn yet or you or it was drawn and you lost or it was drawn and you won or in my case you won and then it was lapsed and redrawn and so that reminder is just going to be in there forever for me which is great so that's how you don't miss out on a hunt if you happen to win there are also uh, these e-postcards too so there's there's the regular kind of regular drawn hunts um, which are all i think they're i think they're all three dollars um, just the regular ones then there's the e-postcard ones which are it's obviously like a legacy system that used to actually send in a postcard and all that kind of stuff um, now they're e-postcards and those are free so you might as well go for those right um, because they're free they also have a lot of applicants um, and a lot of those are going to be a walk-on situation so you might run into a lot of other folks while you're out in the field if you have, do happen to win one of those then you have the big time hunts and those are a lot of times private land um, guided hunts high fence high dollar hunts something that would normally be thousands of dollars or you know maybe even ten thousand dollars or more you can actually win that with a ten dollar application um, i don't personally do those because you could rack up a hundred dollars pretty quick and uh, i'm just not in the mood to gamble a hundred dollars i'll gamble like twenty dollars on six or seven hunts um, and i do that faithfully every year and it actually worked so um, that's my personal strategy you do whatever is right for you um, i think it's pretty cool that these are all available so with texas drawn hunts you can hunt state parks wildlife management areas um, state forests um, Na I believe national forests. I believe national forests, uh, like Davy Crockett. Um, uh, what else? Private property. There's there are private land dove hunts on here. Really cool. A lot of variety. Um, lots of different ways to be able to get into properties you cannot otherwise get into. We all know that Texas has a lot of private land, and it's just hard to hunt if you don't have land. So, I'm really thankful that Parks and Wildlife provides this program and just wanted to make sure that you know how to use it use it properly and take advantage of it get outside and we will see you out there